someone to show me my place in all this. Hey, it's that time again, guys. For some, this is the most anticipated film in the entire year was Star Wars The Last Jedi. So what did I think about it? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Star Wars The Last Jedi Episode 8. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by going ahead and clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So I was really looking forward to Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you could probably possibly tell, I mean, pretty much everybody that's a film or movie geek was looking forward to this. I wasn't looking forward to it as much as everybody else because while I am a Star Wars fan, I am a casual Star Wars fan. I am not a diehard uh, Star Wars fan. And there's nothing wrong with it if you're diehard. I'm just, you know, letting you know before I give you my opinion, my review, my take. I have seen all the Star Wars films. I, of course, I saw the original trilogy back in, when I was in junior high. Then I saw the prequels. as disappointed like most people. And then I saw The Force Awakens. And I like The Force Awakens, but at the same time, I was a little bit disappointed because I thought it copied a little bit more off of Episode 4, A New Hope. I love Rogue One that came out a year ago, and um, now we have The Last Jedi, Episode 8. And with the promotion materials and advertisements and trailers and stuff like that, I wanted to go in fresh. I only saw like the first two trailers, and uh, after that, I didn't want to read any, uh, not read, but see any more featurettes, any more TV spots, any more trailers, anything like that. I completely avoided all of them. Uh, I'm filming this right now Thursday night. I did see it at 7 o'clock, and of course, all the big people had some the premiere this past Saturday I looked at all those Twitter reactions and that did get me excited but I didn't check out any reviews um, and I also didn't go to the press screening that was around the country on Monday as well so really just those Twitter reactions and then uh, the first two trailers was pretty much all that you know I went in before I saw this movie and uh, you know the movie is great I'll go ahead and get that out the way if you are a Star Wars fan I will say that you will be satisfied and one of the first thing that I noticed that I really did like in this movie that really did appeal to me is of course in these Star Wars movies we have the you know in a galaxy far far away we have the opening crawl and of course this wouldn't be a Star Wars movie without that but it's not just a crawl that I noticed that I like because that's been in previous films for some reason it just stood out to me that the aesthetic of the film the, the cinematography you know for some reason it just really stood out to me and didn't just seem all glossy like it did with the prequels that came out in the early like 99 and early 2000s like you can tell that this is a newer movie but at the same time they wanted to have that older feel like the original trilogy and that's just something that stood out to me at the very beginning of this movie that i really did appreciate of course i also liked uh well i don't want to say of course but i also really did i also really did enjoy uh, majority of the characters and how the film picked up right where episode 7 left off because if you know uh, a lot of people were slightly disappointed with where they left um, where they left Luke Skywalker and Rey at the very end because you know everybody's so excited we're getting a new Star Wars film after years and years and years and then we really don't get to see Luke Skywalker there is a lot of Luke Skywalker in this play by Mark Hamill so you don't have to worry about that you know we get a bunch of new characters and we get all of course so what I, I what I liked about the story early on is how the story started started off so intense. It picks up, like I said, right where The Force Awakens left off and you have somewhat of a space battle. And don't worry, I'm not going to spoil this for you here. But during the space battle, the film goes back and forth from the space battle and where everything is happening with Finn and Paul Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac and Carrie Fisher and all that good stuff. But then it jumps back and forth to where uh, Ray is with Luke Skywalker on that island where she's trying to get training and whatnot. 
And it, it was just a great transition back and forth. Like during the first act of this whole entire movie, I was not bored at all. I was loving every moment of it, eating it all up. Like every line of dialogue, every frame, every shot, I was like, this is like the perfect Star Wars movie. And I just really cannot wait to see how this ends. And, you know, um, something that turned me off early on was something that's pretty difficult to, for me to, that I think is difficult for filmmakers to pull off in the film is combining comedic moments or comedic elements at times of seriousness. And there was a little joke that was kind of early on between two characters. And while it was funny, I did chuckle. It kind of did dilute the seriousness of the scene and just kind of let you know, you know, where the stakes are. I mean, I like I said, I did laugh, but I kind of felt that they could have, you know, done away with that. But the opening battle, the opening action scene was very intense. Um, it, it, I'm not going to say who lived or who died or how much was, you know, death or destruction on either side or whatever. But I was actually, you know, kind of clean clenching my fists and clenching my toes and I don't want to say at the edge of my seat because I was in a recliner but at the same time I was like oh snap like how is this going to end or whatever and this is just the first act of the movie you know so I really did like that so I, I really love what they did with uh, Mark Hamill and Luke Skywalker at the very beginning of the movie. I really like what they did with Ray, played by Daisy Ridley of the movie. Carrie Fisher and Paul Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac. I really do like all of that. I love how they um, picked up where things with Kylo Ren um, in this movie. I love that. But a character that I was not a fan of, pretty much the majority of the movie was Finn. Um, you know, I was pretty disappointed by John Boyega's character in this like they to me in my opinion i just kind of feel like the director and writer ryan johnson who did uh the brothers bloom and he also did looper looper is a great movie he wrote and directed this i just kind of feel like he didn't have anything for finn to do and he just kind of ran out of ideas and just kind of just like you know made some type of subplot for finn's character because i i just was not thrilled Phil, finn's character he was at the very beginning but he kind of picked up more in the second act and the film kind of focused on him and to be honest with you guys i was bored out of my mind i lost complete interest in the film i was kind of turning in my seat just like okay where are we going with this 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 whole plot device just kind of seems like it's just taking up runtime and i kind of wanted to get back to either uh either the first order the resistance or the rebellion and also what ray and luke were doing on the island but this little thing over here what finn was doing you know i was over it and there's another character that he was with by the name of rose played by kelly marie tan uh kelly marie tran and she did a great job in her role as well and i'm not gonna say finn didn't do a good job either i mean he did but i was just bored with the scenes you know that he was giving me or whatever i just kind of thought that whole thing was pointless and i wanted to see something else now um somebody that really impressed me a lot was snoke um, I love Snoke, played by uh, um, um, gosh, the the ape Andy Circus or whatever. Um, Snoke was a complete badass. You know, there, it was rumored that Snoke would be more powerful than Dark Vader. Uh, the, then Darth Vader and also the Emperor from the previous uh, Star Wars films, and he is by a long shot, in my opinion. I love every single iota of Snoke on screen. Like seriously, the dude was not messing around. You know, he didn't have a like, you know, we never really got to see the emperor's face too much unless it was like a hologram back in the past. So he had his cloak on. And of course, you know, Darth Vader had his mask on the whole time, you know, doing his trilogy and whatnot. But no, Snoke, you get to see him, you know, in his in his glory or whatever in his throne. And it's just nice. Not only is he nice, but the whole set design was for Snoke was lovely. And he's just someone not to be messed with or whatever. Like, seriously, he will uh, force choke you. He will hit you with a light lightning bolt he will do this he will do that he's just no one to be messed with and i actually i won't even say more than that because i don't want to uh spoil the film anymore so guys i really love most majority of the characters uh at the very beginning of the film i like the aesthetic of the film i like the score by john williams i love the very first act but the second act i was kind of bored but then we get to the end and you know the the ending was great i really did appreciate that in the trailers luke skywalker says this is not going to end the way you think it is and oh my gosh she could not be telling the truth any more than that because there was so many uh twists and turns with the plot and the story 
thread that I did not see coming. So I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know we was going to go here. I didn't know we was going to go there. I thought I thought these characters were about to die and maybe they did die. I thought these characters were going to escape and maybe they didn't escape or whatever because some of it, it, it kind of seemed like it was going to be predictable in, in some instances. But then, no, it didn't. It wasn't predictable. They kind of turned a hard right or a hard left right at the last moment. I was like, okay, wow. You know, I mean, okay, you know, this is not turning out the way I thought it would. I also want to talk about Oscar Isaac's character, Paul Dameron, because he's the best uh, pilot in the fleet or whatever. You know, he can be uh, labeled as kind of just cocky, a hero, and just, you know, whatever he says, he's going to do and goes. But no, it doesn't necessarily turn out that way for his character. And his character did have some growth. It, there was an arc to his character where he did learn a lot to where he is, a you know, a good guy and, you know, you're on his side. And for the most part, he has good ideas and that normally work for him in his favor and the rest of the team. But at the same time, he really did have to learn something in this movie and to really humble himself or whatever. And I really did appreciate that as well. Um, as far as the fighting is concerned, of course, we have, you know, battles on land. We have some space battles. I don't necessarily I mean, you know, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say there, there is a there is a lightsaber battle in this movie or multiple and for the most part, I was thrilled with it. I did appreciate it. And when it first popped on, I was like, oh, OK, I didn't know that, you know, they was going to combining the fighting this way or whatever. You know, it was nice. We did kind of get to see some new weapons. And I did like that. But I will say, guys, while I did enjoy the film, you know, m most of the film, there were three characters to where I was disappointed with. And how do I want to word this without spoiling it? I was just really disappointed with where their characters ended up in this movie. I, I think that's the safe way to say it. Now, I like the characters. I love them to death in this movie. That was great. But, you know, when at the end of the movie, I kind of said to myself, OK, uh, I wanted a little bit more from this character. I want a bit of more from this character and a little bit more from this character, you know, and I'm slightly disappointed. So, guys, I really did enjoy the film. It's great. I like this film more than Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. But to be honest with you, I do like Rogue One better than The Last Jedi. That's just my opinion. I'm just being honest with you. And I did want a little bit more. I, I, I really did enjoy this film. Uh, I am going to buy it on Blu-ray or 4K when it is released a number of months from now. But while I did enjoy it, I am slightly disappointed. If I had to rate Star Wars, The Last Jedi, out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Yes, an 8 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion for Star Wars, The Last Jedi. What did you think? Have you seen it? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Check me out on my website and also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. And there's a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review slash reaction for Star Wars The Last Jedi written and directed by Ryan Johnson. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.